the veil is getting thinner and thinner for the elites. I'm not saying that in a way of trying to rile up, I guess you could say, wonderless hope or to try to say, listen, there's a fighting back chance. More so, not even about trying to bring a negative connotation to this, more so in general, folks, if I'm being honest with you, uh, pertaining to, sorry, just adjusting my camera there, pertaining to the way in which the elites in general at this very moment seem to be attempting to try and cover things up by putting it right in front of our faces. What do I mean? Well, right before I sat down to record this episode, interestingly enough, by the way, someone showed me an advertisement or a trailer, if you will, for an upcoming adult cartoon that is simply based on all of the very basic and strongly worded quote-unquote conspiracies, and I guess you could say strongly disseminated conspiracies, all around the world that, again, has been put into one big cartoon, sort of like the Family Guy or the Simpsons of conspiracy theories. Now, you might be saying, Dave, what does this have to do with the veil getting thinner and thinner? Well, I believe there to be an intrinsic connection between the elites throwing everything they have at us right in front of our faces by doing things like this predictive programming cartoon, which I don't even say it's predictive programming. I call it real-time programming, if you want to call it, because now they're literally implementing all of the conspiracy theories that we thought, you know, even literally, not even a year ago, but 30 to 60 days ago, were complete craziness as it pertains to things like, you know, the, we'll call it the boop-boop, uh, uh, for those that are watching visually, that you could see the gesture I did there to signify what I meant. But so many other things are being seen here, in addition to other things that Dr. Eric Davis, the same Dr. Eric Davis from the Admiral Wilson and uh, Dr. Eric Davis alleged memo transcript leak from uh, Dr. Edgar Mitchell's estate, the sixth man to walk on the moon, we're seeing more and more that the revelations coming forward cannot even be quantified or legislated in a way that would allow for some type of hierarchical control. Now, before I jump into all of that, I apologize for a little bit of the rambling and what have you, but I feel it's very necessary to understand that the elites, regardless of which faction they come from, regardless if there's an interdimensional being or an extraterrestrial behind them, they are throwing everything they can at us in the sense of there being, again, an information warfare, and they're putting it right in front of our faces, whether it's Godzilla versus King Kong, whether it's the movie Dune, whether it's in this case now this new cartoon coming out about conspiracy theories, whether it's, you know, the, the very popular Netflix series Squid Games, whether it's the film A Tenant by Christopher Nolan, we're seeing more and more revelations pertaining to space having to do with certain connotations attached to that from an emotional level and an esoteric level. Now, this will this episode will be out for members about maybe at, at least two weeks before it goes public. So, members, I would like to reference you to an upcoming uh, public episode that will be coming out tomorrow as of the day I'm recording this uh, having to do with phonetics and linguistics and that having a, a direct esoteric attachment. However, let's jump right into it. So today's episode is called My Thoughts on the Guy Oak Crater, Machine Ghosts, not Machine Elves, Machine Ghosts, folks, there's a difference. Motherships Manifesting Targeted Phenomenon, and I say targeted in quote, targeted in quotes, excuse me, because there's a very, very prominent, uh, I guess you could say, angle to be taken there, and Napoleon's Nanochip. And in addition to this, we're going to be looking at things like the use of the unified theory, uh, in addition to evidence of, again, you you know, mothership spawning certain craft and what have you. Now, I brought this up quite substantially in recent public episodes that will be coming out in the coming days for members and have probably, uh, I guess you could say, probably won't come out uh, publicly at all because of the, the, the censorship and the sensitivity of certain topics there. But take a look at the timing of what Jack Vallée said with James Fox when he went on Joe Rogan about a year ago uh, on Joe Rogan's podcast pertaining to, you know, promoting his new book, The Best Kept Secret, in addition to hopefully, again, we would uh, presume pushing the disclosure agenda forward. Mr. Vallée mentioned to Mr. Rogan and to James Fox, I'm sure James Fox knew about this already, however, that in 1952, a bunch of UFOs flew over Washington, D.C., and they shot down a piece of that metal. The piece of the metal is not the main focus of this conversation or what I'm trying to, uh, trying to uh, d disseminate and present here. However, just simply flying over Washington, D.C. is. Now, you might be saying, Dave, why is that the case? Well, that occurred in 1952. The Griotta Treaty allegedly was signed in 1954. There's a certain element, excuse me, of the Griotta Treaty that I think I fundamentally left out, and that is the esoteric element. What do I mean by that? Well, what I found here regarding this agreement made in 1954 with Eisenhower and these Ebens, we find that in the actual agreement in and of itself, there is a data and whistleblower testimony to indicate that there was a deal made, again, a signature doesn't mean anything, but through the use of phonetic energy, okay, and phonetics is the, the, the apparatus of linguistics, the way in which you pronounce certain words with your lips and what have you, there is a phonetic Phonetic energy that contributed to the mental electrical impulses of certain interdimensional apparatuses that were combined and conjoined in a way with the Eisenhower administration from an understanding of a human perception 
relative to that of the Ebens or the gray extraterrestrials that were deceiving very strongly uh, uh, President Eisenhower and his administration. The same Ebens who want to renew the Griotta Treaty every nine years. The same Ebens that also allegedly caused, again, the Crabwood crop circle in, in the UK back in 2001, if I'm not mistaken, that marked the 50-year anniversary of the Griotta Treaty to also be significantly notified, analyzed, and looked into relative to the different types of, I guess you could say, binary code and bits that were occurring. And why do I bring that up? Well, take a look at this right here, folks. Patch.com. NJIT professor helps bring six-foot humanoid robot to life. Tokabi owes part of its existence to Matthew Schwartz, an assistant professor at New Jersey Institute of Technology in Newark, okay? After eight years of development, a six-foot, 220-pound humanoid robot dubbed the Torque Controlled Compliant... Uh, uh, bip biped Tokabi has been brought to life and it got a big boost along the way from New Jersey's Matthew Schwartz. Schwartz, an assistant professor at New Jersey Institute of Technology in Newark, began working on the design of the robot while he was a researcher at the Digital Human Research Center, a research facility in South Korea run by Seoul National University. End quote. Now, again, let's also keep in mind very strongly that Seoul National University, respective to its location in South Korea, also tends to do a lot of work with Taiwanese chips. Now, we can connect that to the real world of events pertaining to the CCP, America, the UK, Australia, Russia, of what's going on right now. However, here's something equally as interesting that I find to be even more relevant and prevalent to the grand scheme of things. So let's take a look at this right over here. This is OpenSea.io. From my understanding on this website, you can essentially buy footage and things like this. However, UFO UAP telescope video showing space vehicles being spawned by motherships. Now, this is what I refer to in the title about targeted phenomenon or targeted experience. How do we know this? Well, if we take a look here, for example, at this screenshot that I took of a tweet by a gentleman by, uh, by the username Think Tank. He says, ever wonder what's behind the orbs? Real images from an imaging sensor used by the DIA, the, the Defense Intelligence agency, excuse me. The orb was about 700 kilometers away. Frederick Porti, retired senior research scientist at the United States Air Force Lab at Kirtland, shared this. Now, I checked this out. I ascertained the veracity to the largest extent in which I could. It seemed to all check out very substantially and very strongly. Now, allegedly, the DIA calls this technology alien hunting binoculars. Now, you might be saying, okay, Dave, you're going to go off of just one tweet from one guy. No, I did, in fact, do my research. I did check out things for, I would say, at least two, two and a half hours to make sure that I knew what I was speaking of here and for those on the member zoom call you got a bit of a preview and a sneak peek now take a look at some of these still images from this particular type of telescope now you might be saying okay what type of imagery is being seen here i would dare to say what we're looking at is a quantum radar okay or at the very least a quantum radar device now i'm bringing this image up here very quickly folks to show you what quantum radars look like and what they can do now this in fact may be a, may be a drone excuse me although it may seem like a bird as well it's hard to say this looks like again the stealth bomber, right? Very, very simply. Now, we see here, this is an article from TheVerge.com. Quantum imaging could be the end of radar jamming. Now, if we take a look over here very very quickly, and this is according to SciTechDaily.com, and we'll get back to those images in a second, I promise, because there is significant evidence to look into there. Quantum radar prototype demonstrated. Microwave quantum illumination outperforms classical radar. Before I go on, folks, I can't help but think from a personal level. I mean, this whole quantum and omnipresent, I guess you could say, entity technology being spirituality, esotericism, you name it, whether it's more of a nuts and bolts perception you take or more of an esoteric perception. I can't help but think, again, look at the, 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 the drop feeding, the way in which all of these major universities, and it's no coincidence that it's strictly the major ones and institutions around the world, all of a sudden have these mass innovations in quantum illumination and things like that. Again, I'm not trying to take away from those that are not privy to the secretive compartmentalized apparatuses and operations going on at the, you know, I guess you could say at the, the, the much seek more secretive level excuse me but at the same time i can't help but think that those that were privy to this compartmentalized information say you have one or two scientists for example delegated to each university around the world in general major university and they have a very secret agenda that they've obliged to i guess you could say serve by until they die relative to the same type of understanding of majestic 12 and their obedience to that group in, in a certain way or that goal or mission rather similar to a cult similar to the way that again in, in the italian mafia the russian mafia people uh, the 
Japanese, Yaku, you know, the, the Japanese mafia people make these types of, I guess you could say, oaths that they live by. And there are a handful of individuals that could be doing this relative to their positions at the public level of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Because honestly, folks, even I would say it's very difficult to keep things covered up when lots of people know about it. But if you have just one or two, for example, mathematicians, quantum physicists, scientists, you name it, at each university, which is not much if you look at the major ones, the, ma the University of Moscow, the University of Oxford in England, you know, Stanford, Harvard, Yale, nothing, you know, Seoul, South Korea, nothing super, again, there's labs all over the world in other countries too, but do you see what I'm saying? If you put a couple scientists here or there, and you pay them off with big time cash, it doesn't take much for them to all of a sudden in the last handful of years make a quote unquote breakthrough that the other scientists that aren't privy and knowledgeable to the type of secrecy and drop feeding going on actually make innovations on on a public level. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's that sort of game of broken telephone. Anyways, new detection technique based on quantum technology developed at IST Austria. Quantum entanglement, and I quote, is a physical phenomenon where two particles remain interconnected. Funny how the way folks, do, uh, by the way, folks, that the word phenomenon is being used more and more these days. Star, uh, sharing physical traits regardless of how far apart they are from one another. Now, scientists from the research group of Professor Johannes Fink at the Institute of Science and Technology uh, Austria, IST Austria, a Along with collaborators uh, Stefano Pirandola from the MI, from Massachusetts, uh, Massachusetts Inst Institute of Technology, MIT, and the University of York, UK, and David Vitali from the University of Camerino, Italy, have demonstrated a new type of detection technology called microwave quantum illumina uh, illumination that utilizes entangled microwave photons as a method of detection. Before I go on, do you see what I'm saying here, folks? Think about it like this. I'm not saying that was the case in this instance, but imagine this. Imagine, for example, the, uh, let's just say hypothetically, the uh, Stefano uh, Pirandola from MIT. Again, MIT being a major, major institution of study that has allegedly helped re reverse engineer um, extraterrestrial technology. Imagine Mr. Pirandola knows about how this is going to be drop fed. He then brings this up to his colleagues, you know, two, three years ago. Hey, guys, I just I realized this. I've come across this. He never did. He was handed it to to himself, not trying to take away his credit, but I'm saying this would be a hypothetical example. He's handed that information, right? Or maybe just enough information to, for him to be able to figure out the rest of the missing formulas or equations on his own from the deep underground military base scientists. He then hands it off to his colleagues at MIT, and then everything looks like it's a smooth revelation and invention on the surface. Do you see what I'm saying? Anyways, take a look at this. And I quote, the prototype, which is also known as a quantum radar, is able to detect objects in noisy thermal environments where classical radar systems often fail. The technology has potential applications for ultra-low power biomedical imaging and security scanners. Using quantum entanglement as a new form of detection, the working principles behind the device are simple. Instead of using conventional microwaves, the researchers entangle two groups of photons, which are called the signal and idler photons. The signal photons are sent out towards the object of interest, whilst the idler photons are measured in relative isolation, free from interference and noise. Okay? End quote. Now, the reason I bring this up, alright, folks, is because Okay, I'm not trying to disrespect the scientists that have that have brought this up. I am not even nearly as intelligent as these people to be able to come up with this. However, with that being said, you don't think that if there was reverse engineer technology back in the 50s or 60s, this could have been discovered by humans in the deep underground military bases in the 70s? Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that was the case. I'm just saying that we see now when we take a step back, uh, individuals like yourself and myself, and we look at the big picture, it's, it, it's plain no drop feeding. It's so clear to see. It's like, oh my God. So hold on. If fiber optics and Kevlar and things like this came allegedly from the Roswell crash, and we can debate if Roswell was a Russian psyop or if there were there was evidence of ETs before Roswell that the U.S. government or army knew about and things like that. But again, let's just say for the sake of this conversation, Roswell was the start of it. It doesn't take much looking back now. Again, easier looking back than in real time back in the day, granted. But to see, holy crap, look at the way it's being laid out. Right now, take a look at this. And I quote, quantum technology can outperform classical low power radar. All right. Prominent milestone towards advancing 80 year old radar technology. End quote. You see this type this this uh, subtitle right here. Prominent milestone towards advancing 80 year old radar technology. Take that in, folks. 80 year old radar technology. Roswell happened about 75, 80 years ago, didn't it? Ah, you see, you see those connections, how all the, all, a lot of this has to do with the involvement pertaining to the 1947 crash, even if it was the late 40s, the early 50s, the mid 50s, you see what I'm saying? It all revolves around, oh, we haven't made this much to leap in technology since, you know, in, the, in 70 years. 
Oh, really? It's funny how you always keep it in that 70 to 80 year time frame range, isn't it? Right? In addition to, again, 1952, going back to what I was saying earlier about a lot of these greys, this particular faction of greys, ramping up the amounts of not just UFO sightings across America and the world, but strictly in America, North America, but also the physical humanoid interactions. Because the, the Ebens, the greys that they called them back then, that faction of greys, wanted Eisenhower to sign, and it, as Colonel Corso said... That the leverage these greys knew that they that they had against the humans and Eisenhower was that Eisenhower and his team did not want and his administration did not want disclosure to get out to the public. So they basically said over from 1952 until the deal was signed in 1954, we're gonna the Ebens basically said we're gonna ramp the living part of my English, ramp the living shit out of the sightings and not just the sightings but the interactions. You see what I'm saying? So we are going to pressure you to sign this deal or else we're just going to come out full force, right? Now, with that being said, speaking of interactions, manifestations, things like this, let's jump right back to what we're looking at over here. This is from that tweet, as I said, from that website, excuse me, that was simplified in this tweet right here. Thank you very much again, Think Tank, at 528vibes is his username. And we see here what seems to be motherships manifesting smaller craft at holographic substrates as, as we've been discussing. In, in the past few months that also harness pocket dimensions. Now, interestingly enough, again, presuming this is a quantum radar, I want you folks, presuming the quality on your screen is good enough, please take what we see here, obviously, is a basic, you know, man-made structure, if you will. But the point here is this. Take a look at this right over here. Look at the energy emanating, particularly this right here, if you can see my mouse, this line going straight down, in addition to this line going straight down, and the horizontal lines of energy that seem to be disseminating from the center of the craft. Again, this is the sort of, not necessarily disc-shaped per se, but it's in that sort of area, if you will. Now, we also see, as per usual, regardless of the way photos are taken, we see the form of energy surrounding the craft here, right? Now, for those that watch the live stream, or that for the members that were on the Zoom call about three weeks ago when we read through the entire Project Beta document, but we also did that on a public YouTube live stream just recently. I encourage you folks to check that out because it'll also provide more details to what I'm about to say. If you remember, there's a particular page in that document of the Project Beta Alien War Plans document, as they call it, that describes the way in which how certain, again, this is just one species craft. I'm not saying this applies to all craft, but how certain craft have to have when they fire one beam from their 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 craft not the mothership but their smaller pod craft a laser beam to attack a beam must ap uh, happen uh, must shoot out from the other side as well in there needs to be an equilibrium or else the craft goes off balance it loses its access to the ether realm therefore loses its anti-gravity propulsion in the way in which we perceive it and then kaplut it's all gone right interestingly enough take a look at this image folks notice again granted this this type of imaging has a grid if you will but notice the line coming out right from here and i deeply apologize if you cannot see it in this episode if you would like to see it more clearly ask me to send uh, to, to email it or send it to you on patreon for members and i will do that no problem take a look at this line right over here coming out and then in addition to that this little lighter line coming out directly from the side of it interesting isn't it you see what I'm saying? That substantiates what we're seeing here from the Project Beta document. I'm not saying that this craft here is, uh, the, the occupants in them are extraterrestrial, but I'm just saying, do you see how that same type of scientific method is applied? At least seemingly based on this radar here, right? With that being said, let's take a look at this image right over here. Same idea. Take a look at this. We see that sort of rectangular dissemination and connection, if you want to call it, of energy. A little bit faded here, but you still see it finishing off right there as it hits the, the, the surface of this platform. We see, again, the energy around it, we, accessing the ether realm, anti-gravity, whatever you want to call it. And we see the line protruding, the line protruding. And lines not protruding significantly anywhere else. I'm not saying the laser beams are being fired at this point. I'm saying that it's possible the energetic frequencies that are disseminating from the craft could indicate the possibility of this being a, 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 some type of realistic instance. Now, let's take a look at this right here. What we're seeing here allegedly is a mothership or a larger ship manifesting a physical craft here. And I'm going to be honest with you, folks. I can understand why certain beings that are in this ship that, that cannot be picked up by traditional radar want to manifest a fake craft below them with the the same people appearing to be in this craft, even though there's no one really in that craft, even though the outer layer may be physical because of how advanced their holographic substrates are relative to pocket dimension technology. But the reason I say that is because this might just be something as simple as whether, you know, they're trying to tell us something in our own personal targeted experiences where, for example, you experience something when you see a UFO and then that someone else that you don't even know, maybe 10, 20 miles down the road or from wherever you are, sees that same UFO, but they see something totally different. That's what I'm referring to by targeted 
targeted phenomenon. It seems like there was a curation based on the delegation that these motherships have to manifest particularly targeted messages relative to what your consciousness inhibits at that current point in time, which makes sense because, again, if all points in time are equal, each person's consciousness would, in theory, be, I guess you could say, separate but equal at the same time, equal in energy but separate in thought because we all inhibit our own unique thoughts. You see what I'm saying now? Take a look at this craft right over here. The energy, again, the holographic craft, if you will. Take a look at some of the energy disseminating from it below. Quite strong, too, and interesting. This technology, presuming what we're looking at here is accurate, is so powerful, it seems like it is emitting heat below this particular holographic craft. Do you see what I'm saying here? In addition to, and again, this is the fake one. How is the fake one emitting heat? Again, it could be simulated heat, if you will, but I think that the technology is a little bit more advanced than that, if you want to call it. Now, take a look at this right here. Notice how the energy around this, the, the, we could call it the fake craft, let's say, and the mothership or the larger craft. Notice, folks, how, again, this energy right here is interconnected. There's that fine point where the energies right over here intersect. Maybe I'm overlooking things. Maybe I'm looking into things a little bit too much. You tell me. But again, let's take a look at this final one right here. This seems to be a little bit different of what we're looking at. Again, the energy in which is disseminated from here, I don't know if it's a mothership in this case or if it is a manifested one. However, what I find equally as interesting is that the motherships that are close to the sun seem to also be able to do this without needing to be close to the craft. Now, I don't know if there needs to be some type of energetic water source or something of the sort. But again, we see here the different lines based on this what seemingly quantum radar i will say seemingly because i don't want to you know sit here and say this is definitely a quantum radar folks but again we see the way in which the dia applies this sort of hunting alien binoculars uh, i guess you know to to this whole thing to this whole process if you will now Here's the next thing I want to cover right here. We're going to jump on over to machine ghosts, okay? BBC.com. Hundreds of sea turtles wash up dead in Mexico. At least 300 sea turtles have washed up dead on Mexico's uh, Pacific coast. Preliminary exams suggest that the olive ridley turtles, uh, Lepidocellis ol Olivacea drowned, an official with Mexico's Environment Ministry said. They, the official said they had probably become tangled in illegal fishing nets in the high seas or in abandoned nets known as ghost nets. Now, that's not a, that's not a connection. That's a total fluke and coincidence, end quote. Now, again, notice how there is a public apparatus to dismiss such events. But there's no public apparatus or database or anything to try and look into any of this further. Now, interestingly enough, SysTruth.com, radio signals from the center of the earth received by NASA. The Canadian newspaper, very seriously, a weekly world news was published February 14, 1995, in an article which proves again the theory of the hollow earth. This is the title of the article. Cape Canaveral, Florida. NASA receives radio signals coming from inside the Earth. Again, interesting that it's Florida relative to where the alleged secret space program Solar Warden base is right off the coast of Florida. NASA has decoded them but won't reveal the contents. The source of this information leak states that they obviously know more about us than we do about them. The source said, and this is a senior uh, NASA official, the source said scientists agree that it is the most startling and important discovery of the century. I would, before I go on, folks, I just want to say, I think there's a lot of stuff that happens on almost a monthly, weekly basis that is the discovery of the century relative to what they're not telling us. But anyways, we have long thought that space was the final frontier, but now we realize that inside our planet lies uncharted territory that could prove to be far more important to our future. Anyways, okay, they have a technology, and I quote, according to this NASA official, that is capable of sending signals through the Earth's crust, hundreds of miles of Earth and rock, okay? Now, before I go on, I want to bring up this right over here, warrenphotographic.co.uk, fairy chimneys in Cappadocia, Turkey. Some of you folks may, in fact, be familiar with this. A lot of people to this day don't know what the fairy chimneys were used for. Now, for those that don't realize, the fairy chimneys seem to be near a ley line that was, in fact, demagnetized, and how do we know that? Well, if we take a look at unifyingtheory.com, blogspot.com we're going to find here and i quote this is a map of all the known pyramids and we are discovering even more with new technology i believe they used these pyramids to form a sort of energy grid around the planet and took the earth's natural spherical emf field and created focal points turning it into an icosido icosidodecahedron or similar shape with the line intersections being the place the pyramids would be built now over time the earth and its emf travel through different parts of space and thus are exposed and react to the different energies etc they pass through such as when the sun has a sunspot and it, and it affects the emf end quote interestingly enough it could it be possible that things like fairy chimneys things like stonehenge relative to the 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 position of where ley lines are laid out OK, could it be possible that those radio signals from Agartha, let's be honest, at this point, it's probably more than likely Agartha or some pocket dimension or some internal civilization trying to communicate. Again, that was back in 95. Things have been covered up since then. We know that. But 
using those different types of ley lines that have been demagnetized to harness the low wave frequencies to send communicative messages from below. And we see here from unifyingtheory.blogspot.com, again, some of the images that could indicate, again, the sacred geometric apparatus that could be used to spawn this or could be used to bring this to fruition or create a form of an energetic portal. Now, why do I say that? Well, take a look at this right over here. What we have, according to usatoday.com, is a three-year-old boy who was missing for days says a bear watched over him in North Carolina woods. This was in January 28, 2019, okay? And quote, you might be saying, Dave, why are you connecting a random boy who got lost and was just so, you know, very nicely was protected by an animal to what's going on with the communications of the ley lines and the different esoteric, you know, frequencies and things like this? Well, interestingly enough, this is in the North Carolina woods. Right when there was an alleged suppression of a ley line in the fairy chimneys in Turkey, a ley line in North Carolina perked up. Could it be possible that the resonating frequencies at an ultra low frequential level actually were affected this type of bear, if you will, or this this bear in, in, in particular to be able to control and manifest the thoughts? of his own consciousness and vicinity, similar to what we were looking at in the way in which the motherships can manifest their own craft, except at a much more advanced level. Obviously, I'm sure maybe there's some external technology being used there. But the point is that, again, we find little instances like this. Some people call them magical instances where animals that are supposed to kill humans end up doing the opposite. Or generally speaking, just because of the way the food chain goes in evolutionary biology, you name it, right? Now, we can also add, too, that demagnetized ley lines could, in fact, also be where machine ghosts are. Now, if we take a look at scarenormal.com, here's what we're going to find. And I quote, again, what are DMT machine elves? What do they look like? We're going to see here some of the images that maybe some of you have experienced and seen, too, right? We're also going to see here what do they want. Also, by the way, this seems to be like sort of a gray alien, if you will. Look at the hand, by the way, the all-seeing hand. I forgot exactly what it's called, or the all-seeing eye, if you will. Um, some of you may resonate with that. The point here is this. I am not speaking strictly about these beings. I am speaking of the beings in the background. The question then becomes this. Is the visualization of what is seen when on DMT, okay, through the tether connection of the esoteric apparatus, uh, not apparatus, excuse, excuse me, the esoteric firmament, if you want to call it, okay, in correspondence with the Schumann resonance. All right, by the way, Mason, just friendly shout out, brother. Um, just thought of you there. Could it be that that is a visual representation of the way in which the power hierarchy is, that there are machine ghosts controlling machine elves? And the reason I bring this up, folks, the reason I really do bring this up is because if we take a look, for example, right over here at, you know, our machine elves evil, how do you meet the machine elves? How do you contact them? I cannot help but think that the government is working with these machine elves to curate a form of paranormal interdimensional manifestation through apparatuses like HARP, CERN, you name it, using certain innovations like this one right over here at the very beginning, NJIT professor, okay, helps bring six-foot humanoid robot to life to advance a synthetic artificial intelligence perpendicular to that of an intelligence that could also be biological. That, that is not to say that is a good agenda. That is not to say that is a bad agenda. Here's the thing. How come we're not deciding our own agenda? That's the main question. That's the main thing I would ask, right? Now, take a look at this right here. Uh, NACC or NACME.com, the ghost in the machine, examining change phenomenon in psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. Notice, again, this is a fantastic, I guess you could say, um, expose, if you will, of the different type of psychedelics we see here and the way in which it's been portrayed in the media over the years, how all of a sudden things start to change. How, look, CNN, how magic mushroom chemical could free the mind of depression and addictions. Again, what is the long game here? What is the agenda? Wh is it possible these machine ghosts are giving directives to these machine elves to curate a both karmic and cosmic balance pertaining to the hermetic principles as above, so below, the yin, the yang, you name it, saying, listen, whatever agenda you have is not necessarily bad nor good for the masses of Earth. But at the same time, there needs to be a form of a balance, which is why we see here again the elite at first saying, look, you know, Nixon's war on drug addicts, you know, the genies out of the bottle, the, you know, the LSD and all this stuff. Right. All of this, you know, the hippie era, if you want to call it. No disrespect to those that were around in that era and enjoyed it. Uh, fair enough. And then all of a sudden how they can help you. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? And again, all of that was within that 70 to 80 year span at the absolute most. Interesting, isn't it? Going back to the beginning of the episode that I was uh, talking about, that 70 to 80 year span, the psychedelic experience as archetype of the hero's journey, a trip. Look at all this, folks. Psychedelic assisted therapy. It could be possible that these interdimensional beings are telling 
these humans in the deep underground military bases. And in some cases, some of these lesser um, uh, evolutionarily and intellectually developed extraterrestrials, not good nor bad, but they're saying, listen, whatever you want to do, there needs to be a balance either way. So it's possible through the phonetic dissemination of the energetic apparatus from the mainstream media, Okay, in correspondence with the military industrial complex, the military media complex, and the National Security Council, really, but the National Security Apparatus that Steve Bannon has even said, too. There's something rotten within the National Security Apparatus to balance out the effect because there's no way to break free will. Again, you got to bend it at the absolute most. Now, we this takes us to our final part here. Napoleon and the moon. Not necessarily there being a connection, but Napoleon was abducted and had a chip inserted into his head. Unrealfacts.com. Now, take a look at this right over here. According to certain individuals, because I want to play both sides, unfortunately for the fans of E.T., this story is as fake, again, is very fake. It never happened, and the story was complete fabri fabrication by a tabloid newspaper, the Weekly World News, that has been published not once, but twice. Clearly, it has proven to be a revenue raiser, end quote. Now, take a look at this right over here. If we take a look at some of the proof, we're going to open up the Weekly World News, the 1997 article, and we're going to see here this article from news.bbc.co.uk. So, alien chip in Napoleon's skull, this will be coming up in an upcoming public episode, and we'll see that he disappeared for a handful of days where Napoleon then claimed that he was just captured by the enemy when he really wasn't. Now, we'll see here as well too, alien implant found in Napoleon's skull. Now, you might be saying, okay, in general, I got to be honest with you folks, you, get, you might be saying, okay, you know, this is a tabloid and this is nothing substantial. All right, so what about this right over here? News.bbc.co.uk. A U.S. company has been given the green light to implant microchips in humans. It's, intend, uh, it's intended to provide medical information, but will it turn into a surveillance system? I got to be careful pertaining to what I'm speaking to here, but you might be saying, Dave, okay, where's the, I don't understand, where's the, where's the proof, where's the connection with Napoleon? Now, keep in mind, this is scary because this is back in 2004, right? Only now are we being privy and, and thinking about these type of topics. However, the same individuals, which we will be going into in the members-only episodes, the same individuals that filed these patents were also the same individuals that donated the largest amounts of grants to the alleged institutions that found the chip in Napoleon's skull. We see how quick the, the, the elites go and push themselves to try and, again, suppress things like, you know, the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant and, and many different things, you know, that we end up realizing is actually real. We see, again, Leonid Ivashov's book saying that the real reason, aside from profit and greed and oil and world domination, is to look for ancient esoteric, um, not just extraterrestrial, but human technology, but different type of technology, acoustic levitation technology, spiritual esoteric technology, right? Now, you might be saying, okay, Dave, what does this have to do with the Gaiot crater? Now, according to Wikipedia, Gaiot is a lunar impact crater on the moon's far side. It is separated from the crater Kostinsky to the northeast by only a few kilometers of rough terrain. To the west, southwest lies the crater Lobachev Lobachevsky, and to the east southwest is Ostwald, end quote. Now, interestingly, uh, interestingly enough, excuse me, in Project A119, Project A119, where the Americans wanted to drop a nuke on the moon, but before the nuclear warhead could even get there, UFOs disabled it with a bunch of laser beams. Interestingly enough, it's also close to where, again, this crater is close to where the Russians or the Soviets at the time had their own base. And for those that are in members-only episodes that have, you know, watched the ones from many, many months ago, you'll know we looked at those documents. We may, in fact, bring them up again. And in, and also, at the same time, we see here that the crater is named after the Swiss-born American geographer and geologist Arnie he Arnold Henry Guyot. Okay. End quote. Arnie Arnold Henry Guyot, excuse me, allegedly worked with Paul Benowitz, who is the same gentleman that wrote that paper about Project Beta for contracting companies that were analyzing these alien bases and secret, uh, you know, top secret bases in New Mexico. Again, same thing we covered on our live stream, same thing that we covered with the members in a more intimate setting on a Zoom call a few weeks back. I bring this up because lunar waves seem to be the, the strongest when analyzed on the Gaio crater. Now, not only that, but if we take a look here at alienjigsaw.com, unusual objects inside Gaio crater on the lunar surface, crater and triangular structure, right? We see here some interesting things. I even have a friend on Instagram by the name of Zooming, I think Zoom, Z-O-O-M-I-N-G, K, Zooming K. I, T, K I T or K T, excuse me, but anyways, he does great work. He takes a very advanced, granted, financially expensive, but you know, great that he has one. 
telescope points it at the moon and he notices very strange things particularly even within that of the the vicinity of the Gaio crater now i don't want to put words on it in his mouth i don't want to speak on his behalf he has a fantastic channel i highly suggest that you check it out however at the same time could it be possible that the Gaio crater because of its intermediary geographical location relative to the alleged you know uh, american base and uh, russian base formerly soviet but now russian base on the moon presuming there's bases on the moon could it be possible that these interdimensional machine ghosts are curating a very strong response from the Gaio crater that is then being applied towards Earth. You see what I'm saying here? And it uses things like the ley lines and the unified theory to affect different types of, I guess you could say, programs, spiritual programs, simulative programs, if you want to call it. That could then affect things like, for example, that boy being protected by the bear. I'm not saying that's what's going on there, but I'm saying the boy being protected by the bear may have been an energetic discharge that the bear received at an ultra low frequency. Again, it's funny that ultra low frequencies seem to be reoccurring more and more and more in addition to ultra low frequencies at the same time also being used more and more allegedly. I say allegedly very strongly and carefully in these quantum radars. And we see that in the quantum radar prototypes, right? With that being said, folks, let me know what you think, and we'll catch all of you very, very soon. Cheers.